untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white plus one plus one counter synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and one of the new build around cards in our deck featured in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is Invoke Justice, a 5 mana sorcery that returns target permanent card from our graveyard straight to the battlefield. And then we also get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among our creatures. So under the right circumstances we can actually win the game on the spot with an Invoke Justice, especially when it's combined with Sigardos Summons, a 6 mana enchantment, saying creatures we control with plus 1 plus 1 counters on them have base, power and toughness 4-4, four, four, have flying and are angels in addition to their other types. So the best case scenario involves us casting an Invoke Justice on turn 5, getting back Sigardos Summons from our graveyard, we get to distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters, meaning we can turn 4 of our creatures into 4-4 four, four angels, and then all those plus 1 counters will stack on top of the 4 power and toughness, making our creatures even larger, so that's how we can potentially win a game out of nowhere, thanks to Invoke Justice. But how do we get Sigarda Summons in the graveyard to get it back with Invoke Justice? That's where the Learn mechanic comes in handy, featured on Professor of Symbology and Sparring Regimen. Professor is a 2 mana 2 1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us learn, meaning we can either grab a lesson card out of our 7 card sideboard in best of 1, or we can discard a card from our hand to draw a card. So that's how we discard our Sigarda Summons to later get it back. And then we also have the full playset of Sparring Regimen, an enchantment that when it enters lets us learn, and whenever we attack we can put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it. So it also has great synergy in our deck, especially with Sigarda Summons, letting us turn any of our creatures into a 4-4 Angel that also gets to untap and get additional power and toughness. And then if we don't want to discard a card to draw with the learn mechanic, we can always grab a lesson, including academic probation, which can potentially prevent a creature from attacking and blocking for a turn, environmental sciences to grab a basic land, reduce the memory as removal, inkling summoning to make a 2-1 flyer, anatomy to put 2 plus 1 counters on a creature and give it vigilance until end of turn, introduction to prophecy for a card draw, and finally mascot exhibition if we have a lot of mana to make a variety of creature tokens. So those are the lesson cards, then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Olenbok Escort, a 1-1 one -one creature with Vigilance that we can sacrifice at any point, and then a target creature we control that has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, gains a lifelink and indestructible until end of turn. So a very useful ability to protect one of our key creatures, and can potentially allow us to, for example, block with the Escort and the creature that has plus 1 counters on it, sacrifice the Escort, and then our creature that has plus 1 counters on it can also gain some life and maybe take out a creature in the process. Then we also have the full playset of Star Pupil, a 1 mana 0 0 that enters with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and when the pupil dies, put all its counters on target creature we control. So the pupil, when combined with a Sigarda Summons, just by playing it will be a 1 mana 5 5 flyer, which is pretty good, and then of course has great synergy with all the other plus 1 counter effects in our deck. Then at 2 mana we've got of course a full playset of Illuminarch Aspirant, one of the best creatures in standard, and has awesome synergy throughout our deck as well, as a 1-1 that can put an additional plus 1 counter on any creature we control at the beginning of combat. Then we've got our Professor and 4 copies of Spirited Companion as a 1-1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw a card, just gives us an extra body to put plus 1 counters onto, and helps us hit our land drops and assemble our various combo pieces. And then at 4 mana, the full playset of the Wandering Emperor provides the main interaction in our deck, as it can be flashed in, and then we can activate the Wanderer during the opponent's turn to potentially use the minus 2 ability to exile target tapped creature and also gain 2 life. We can minus 1 to make a 2 2 samurai token with vigilance, or we can plus 1 to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature, and it also gains first strike until end of turn. So many abilities that are individually powerful, but also happens to have great synergy throughout the deck as she can provide additional plus one plus one counters and make creatures to put those counters onto in the first place. And we can easily play the Wandering Emperor, use the minus two in the opponent's turn to maybe take out a creature, minus one in our turn, and then we can potentially get her back with Invoke Justice on turn five. So that's another very powerful play pattern that our deck is capable of. And then at 6 mana, of course, Sigarda Summons, which we can hardcast at 6 mana, but ideally we can get it in play with Invoke Justice and save ourselves the 6 mana to cast it. 
and then our mana base includes one copy of Seed of the Empire as additional interaction, and then four copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon, which can turn into a nice 3-4 flyer, also very good with cards like Sparring Regimen, which will put plus one counters on it, which will stay on our creature land even after it stops being a creature, and then a 19 basic planes. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Not close to casting summons, but if we find a way to learn, we can discard it in the hopes of finding Invoke Justice. And it's the Mono White Mirror. Alright, let's go for Aspirants, and then I guess we're fine with the trade since it's a pupil. Opponent takes two. Got a nice turn three lined up with Escort, second Aspirant, opponent red-white. So this might be a deck uh, going all in with plus one counters, lifelink and indestructible. Which we can try and go over the top with uh, Sigarda Summons, but that does require drawing Invoke Justice. So for now Aspirant plus Escort. And then there's probably no sense in trying to stay back on defense with anything. So we'll send for five. Although fully expect my opponent to hit us with some lifelink here. Right, it's going to be a borrowed time instead. Probably goes after the 2-2 two -two Aspirants which we cannot protect with Escort. Alright, so we're trading some blows back and forth. Another Escort. Well, we're getting sort of close to hard casting Sigarda summons. For now, probably still counter here, attack with all. And there's an adversary to pump their team. Alright, so the race is going to be a close one. Not sure attacks. Another companion, let's see what it draws. Wandering Emperor could be excellent. So for now, Aspirant could put counter on itself. Although I'm unsure if we want to attack. Because our opponent can hit us back with a bunch of life gain. Although if they do, then the adversary would be tapped, so we can exile it with the Emperor. So, tricky spot. Could just kind of stay back, play defense, especially if there's some trample counters incoming. Although then we don't encourage our opponent to turn their creature sideways. Let's try putting counter on companion, just attack with pupil. And then we could make both the companion and the aspirant indestructible with our two escorts, which can also soak up some damage. Potentially preventing the lifelink from adversary if it doesn't trample. Right, Raichu. That works. And yeah, the escorts being able to sacrifice to prevent adversary gaining life is going to be key. Opponent is at four. So we might have a hard time dealing the last points with a lifelinker on defense. Unless we can use the Emperor for surprise plus one counter and first strike. So, close game. Alright, opponent goes all out. 
feel like we can uh, survive this pretty easily. So, escort in front of adversary will get sacrificed. And then another escort could soak up the usher hits. And then I could, let's say, block Aspirin, block Raichu. Making those two indestructible. So we don't take any damage whatsoever. And then next turn we should have enough for lethal. Do we have enough through an additional blocker? Let's say they play another Usher. I would still have uh, three, four attackers. Yeah, that should still work. Get on tap and send the team sideways. All right. So Escort, pretty key here in the final stretch. Didn't even need our Planeswalker. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a Keepable Hand. Pupil into Companion to help hit our land drops. And then if we draw Sigarda Summons, we can discard it to the Regimen. If not, we can learn for something else. Facing a Moonsnare prototype, some sort of artifact deck. Right, there's our land, perfect. Blue reds. And another prototype to play. Okay. Let's go for Regiment, I think, or we can go Companion Escort, wait a turn on Regiment in case we draw. Invoke Justice, that's also fair. Also plays better around potential spot removal here. Alright, get in for two. And then we can just cast Invoke Justice on five. Still hoping for a Sigurd of Summons off the top that we can discard. Although any expensive permanent I'm happy to discard to the Regimen, if that means getting it back with Invoke. Although, of course, counter spells are still a factor. Opponent passes with a bunch of mana up. Still fine to go for a regimen here. And we'll see what happens. Resolves. Can discard planes, or I can just learn for something. So next turn we're potentially going for Invoke Justice, turn after. I guess I might want some card draw from Introduction. Or we could go with a more aggressive Expanded Anatomy. I think I want a card draw. And then attack, where to put to counter is another interesting question. Star Pupils, kind of a safe target. Sure. If they kill it we at least get to move the counter or we can sacrifice Escort if we prefer. Opponent might have a response. It's gonna be Prismari Command trying to kill the pupil. Yeah, let's save it. And then next turn, Invoke Justice could maybe get back the Escort. Opponent also with a Fading Hope, although we can replay the pupil second main. Alright, so getting in some damage. Regimen gives us a long term advantage, and hopefully, we get to resolve Invoke Justice here. Let's see if our opponent taps out for something. Gold Span, of course. So they might have four mana after the attack, thanks to those treasures. Still enough for a counterspell. Could also keep up Iganjo to try and kill Gold Span. I think I prefer going for Invoke here. Alright, and then I guess we'll spread out to love a little bit. Maybe another counter on companion. Sure. Opponent's down to seven. 
but they do get to untap with a lot of mana. Fading hope on the escort. Do I want to sacrifice it here? Given that I have another one in hand, maybe that's not such a bad idea for opponent has some sort of sorcery speed sweeper. Yeah. Protect the companion. Also denies the scry one from Fading Hope, which is not irrelevant. It's gonna be a Shadow Skull smashing, cleaning up Pupil and the author companion. Alright, still get to move the counters. And yep, yeah, opponent packs it in. Next turn, companion would hit for six thanks to Regimen. And uh, possible we would find another plus one counter somewhere with our prophecy. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Double Aspirant, always powerful, regardless of synergy. And then hoping for some nice 3 and 4 mana plays. Anything to learn, we can grab Environmental Sciences to get an extra land as well. Gets us closer to Invoke Justice. Opponent also on Mono White. So yeah, we'll see how this plays out. It's not my favorite matchup, but having double Aspirin to start out is a big deal. Just gotta hope to dodge Thalia and Spellbinder to delay our Invoke Justice. And of course gotta hit our land drops in the meantime. That looks like a green-white, maybe Naya variant with Intrepid Adversary. All right, get to double spell nicely. There's still the concern of a Brutal Cathar exiling my star pupil here. I think that's a risk I'm willing to take just to make it a 4-4 to discourage an attack. Or I could split the difference, put like some counters in other places. No, let's make a 4-4 pupil. And pass it back. Uh, they've got the Brutal Cathar, of course. But at least we forced them to exile a Star Pupil as opposed to Aspirant. Escort can still trade for Adversary. Although, awkwardly, it's gonna switch to Nighttime as we don't have any play to make. So now, could make a 3 3 Aspirants. Or make a pair of 2 twos. I think we want a 3 3 so it can block an initiate after it trains. Sigarda to pump the humans. Opponent might be expecting a Wandering Emperor here, but turns out we don't have anything. Right, opponent sends in Adversary and Initiates. Can block, block, sack escorts, kill Adversary basically. And that also gives us a target for Invoke Justice now. And let's say we put three here, one here. And then I guess we'll make them both five powered creatures. Do I want to swing with both or just one Aspirant? 
Happy to trade Escort for Sigarda, basically. Yeah, I guess this is fine. Opponent takes it. And given that there's another Invoke Justice waiting in the wings, we're pretty happy to sag the Escort once again. So hoping to dodge more Exile removal. Although it is nighttime, so another Brutal Cathar would be Moonrage Brute instead. And that's what happens. Although if they can double spell, they would both transform, which would be very bad for us. Sigarda attacks. Okay, Sparring Regiment the draw. So we don't want to double spell if we can help it. So what's the play here? I could sack Escort preemptively just to make an Aspirant lifelink and indestructible, then invoke Justice, get the Escort back, keep growing the Aspirants. I think that's the play. Although if the Moonrage Brutes ever flip, we're in big, big trouble. But I can't think of a great way to prevent that from happening. If I regimen for removal, we're just playing into them, transforming the brutes. So, yeah, let's try this. Opponent jumps with initiates. And takes eight. Alright, don't double spell, please. It's gonna be a tap lance and another Moonrage Brute. Wow. Yeah, turns out that if they manage to play those on daytime, we would not have been in as good of a position. Now I could fire up Cave, try and put some counters on there, because if they double block with Brutes or triple block we can still activate the Escort. So I'm happy to diversify my threats a little bit. If I go for Regimen, I could prevent something from blocking, for instance. That doesn't seem amazing. Let's say we prevent a Brute from blocking, attack with double Aspirants. I guess they would both be lethal, so we would force a double chump of the Moonrage Brute. Then next turn it flips back, exiling one of the large Aspirants. As opposed to activate Cave, put two counters on it, attack with all. Opponent wasn't able to double spell last turn, so it's unlikely that they can next turn. Now let's do this, and that leaves us with a large cave that we can activate going forward. So the escorts doing a lot of work here in the face of a triple first ranking Moonrage brute. And of course, double invoke justice. Opponent goes for the triple block and a chump. So we want to take out the brute that has our uh, pupil underneath. Their opponents at one, and don't really see them recovering from here. Well, it was a lot closer than it looked, because at any point those Cathars could have transformed, but luckily for us they didn't. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. We've got the combo of Learn, Invoke Justice, and Sigarda Summons all rolled up. So if we can get to five mana. We should be in business. And in the meantime, 
Not a bad start with Escort and Aspirant. So hopefully our opponent doesn't mess up our game plan too much. Turn 1 planes. So opponent could have all sorts of disruption, but play Aspirant for now. Turn two, it's gonna be a Clarion Spirits, that's fine. Could go for Companion this turn, or Professor discarding Summons, which is probably fine. All right, another Invoke Justice. And the companion can help us hit our land drops as well. Next time we learn, we can grab environmental sciences. Another clarion spirits, your opponent can start going wide once they can double spell. Alright, land please. Nice. Okay. So, where to put the counter? Probably fine to put it on Professor. And I'm okay trading it for Clarion Spirits. And if they double block, that's fine too, I think. Could have just put an extra counter on Escort, but also don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. And then another land off the top would be perfect. Well, I guess I should have specified untapped land. So yeah, untapped land for Invoke Justice is probably going to be too much for the opponent to overcome. Opponent does get to double spell finally, so they do get to make a steady stream of chum blockers. And yeah, those spirit tokens will definitely help them in surviving the oncoming Assault of Angels. Alright, guess we'll have to wait one more turn. Professor might as well learn for something useful since we have land 5 ready to go. And what is that going to be? Could probation their homestead courage? That feels a bit weak. So maybe we just go for sciences get a land, which we can play right now. Seems acceptable. All right, and then counter, we can start spreading out a little bit more. Maybe put it on Professor of Symbology. And then next turn we'll make sure to put counters everywhere. Do I have any great attacks? Don't think so. Alright, back to back Invoke Justice. Should be good. Opponent does get to make a few more spirits. But soon our creatures will gain flying, so if our opponent gets too aggressive with those spirit tokens, they might regret it. Opponent hangs back. Well, let's invoke some justice. One, two, three, and I guess we'll make it four. And we can attack with the team. And yeah, opponent's just dead on board. They've got four flying blockers, but we've got at least 10 damage coming across. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not the most inspiring hands, but probably still a keep. Especially on the strength of turn two aspirants up against Monorad, so they could have ample answers to our two drop. And turn one Kumana also very powerful if they can follow it up with a creature on two. Which they can. And play with fire takes out pupil before it can put its counters anywhere else. Alright, so could go for Aspirin, put counter on itself. 
Although, probably don't want to trade, so we'd be taking four. But at least we get that counter, which is probably still worthwhile. And then next turn we can potentially make it a 3 3. Bonan does have the Royal Eruption to take care of it. It's too bad. And a Rabbit Battery. Alright, so we're in a bit of trouble, although Invoke Justice might be able to save us if we can get to 5 mana. Probably should have waited to play my land in case I drew the Tapped Cave. Sparring Regimen lets us attack and potentially keep the Companion on defense as her opponent rumbles in for 7. Yeah, I'm afraid that... Uh, Invoke is going to be too slow, even with the Sigarda Summons combo. So... Yeah, if I go for Regimen, can discard Summons. But uh, then we're still... probably going to be dead. Since Justice probably has to get back a creature for me to stabilize. So... Maybe I should go Companion in the hopes of drawing another creature I can play. Like, for instance, a uh, Professor of Symbology would be pretty good. Being able to then discard summons to set up the Invoke and allowing us to maybe trade off. I think that's probably the play. Did not find anything, so now I think we're dead. But yeah, we did have turn 5 Invoke with summons available. Opponents draw just a little too fast, especially with them on the play. So they can turn the team sideways, have to double chump just to survive. Which is not where we want to be. Might as well block here so they cannot move the equipment afterwards. And I don't think there's any draw that still saves us here. Alright, so we can invoke, get back Star Pupil. Author creatures also got exiled by etching. So we get to have one large Star Pupil as we die to the small red creatures. Alright, we gave it a shot. And a Raichu, nice curved topper here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Hoping to draw into Invoke Justice. Can uh, discard our Sigarda summons with one of our sparring regiments. And looks like we're up against Mono White Aggro. And we'll hang back with the Escort for now. Up against Mono White Aggro, which is not our favorite matchup. Turn to Thalia is quite effective at making all our non creature spells more expensive. And the lead Spellbinder could exile. Invoke Justice before we can cast it. Twinblade Geist for double strike, okay. Another Aspirant's not bad. Can play that. And then, I suppose, one counter on Escort. I could trade Aspirant for Geist. That might be okay. Although long-term, Aspirant's probably still better. So maybe just put everything on the Escort for now, which has Vigilance, so we can uh, block the Usher as well. And then we've got plenty of counters if we ever get to 6 mana for summons, but that might be a while. Another Usher. Times two, okay. So, 
we might be unable to attack. Let's see if we put three counters on escort, it goes up to seven. I guess our opponent's unlikely to triple block here. So sure. Alternatively, I could just play another escort, which could make the original one indestructible. Doesn't seem as exciting. And then I'll discard summon since we're pretty far from six mana. Draw another one. And attack for seven. And we'll see if they want to trade. Just a chump. Okay. Opponent could of course have removal for escorts. But then we still have our powerful aspirants available. Aha, uh -huh, looks like a blue-white spirit deck. Makes more sense why they're playing the twin blade geist. So we could expect some counter spells, which would be unfortunate if they counter invoke justice. Lion Sash can actually exile whatever we try and get back with Invoke, so that's also annoying. So it doesn't look like Invoke is happening this game, but we drew one anyways. Alright, let's play Regimen, probably gets countered by a Geist Light Snare. Does not. We'll discard another Summons. Or I could go for Environmental Sciences, but would really like to hit my Land Drop naturally this turn. Which we did. And then now we can start diversifying our counters, perhaps. Let's see, one on Aspirant. Maybe two on Aspirant, and then put all the counters from Regimen onto that one. And then we have an Escort to make any creature with plus one counters indestructible. Opponent goes for the triple block, so I could sacrifice Escort. Would be bad if our opponent has like a bounce spell here. And um, I guess our opponent realizes that uh, we have that option and concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable enough. Hopefully we find a way to learn to discard summons and find our Invoke Justice. And Companion can help us hit our land drops for the Wandering Emperor as well. Facing perhaps a control deck. Asper control. Shambling Ghasts. Pretty effective here at blocking Pupil early. And a portable hole to exile it as well. Fair enough. Another Companions, not bad. So next turn I can go for another Companion plus a Tapped Cave to ensure a turn for Wandering Emperor. Alright, so not quite the deck I had in mind, so more of a black-white, low-curve, maybe sacrifice deck. Now that we drew the other planes, I could maybe still play Pupil. Don't think we're attacking anytime soon. Can play the escort as well. Let's go for a pupil. Pass it back. Opponent foretells. Could be, I guess, a doom scar. Not sure. I'll take three. Another summons. We definitely want to try and get rid of. Could play Emperor and Minus on the Shambling Ghast, but that doesn't seem all that great, so we'll attack and then probably gonna make a token end of turn. Opponent passes. Still stuck on two lanes, so don't really want to give them treasure by killing Shambling Ghast if I can avoid it. And then we want to slowly get to 6 mana for Sigarda summons. Which also plays well with the counters from the Wandering Emperor. Could see them cast a Vanishing Verse on the Emperor. Keep 
Watch for intruders. It's gonna be a poison the cup on our token instead. So they do get to scry towards their next land. Okay, another land means we get to play summons next turn. And then for now we want to start piling up some counters. So the summons will be more effective. And yeah, that could be a lot of damage out of nowhere if we... Hopefully don't kill those shambling ghasts. Uh oh, deadly dispute. It's gonna set off a chain reaction. Although they're just going for treasure since they need the mana. Okay, that works. Lands. And a Skyclave to exile the Wandering Emperor, most likely. Alright, so we won't get to place another counter somewhere, but we still have a pupil and companion with counters already on them. And a, a lot more ways to generate counters in the deck. And our opponent's on a two-turn clock here, so... I like my chances. Welcoming Vampire for card draw explains all the one drops. But it's gonna be a chumping vampire. And we can fire up cave as well. And that should be lethal in the air. Alright, so opponent stumbled a little bit of mana. But luckily, got to play our Sigarda summons before Shambling Ghast took care of all our creatures. So, yeah, we didn't get to necessarily play the turn 5 Invoke Justice, getting back Sigarda summons very often. Although I did manage to pull it off a few times in testing. And I guess in the game against Moderate, we would have been able to, but just didn't have the time to pull it off. So it does happen from time to time, but don't expect it to happen every game, otherwise you'll be disappointed. But of course, one of those powerful plays that makes it very difficult for other decks to keep up. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.